the biggest advantage women's sports has today is that we're not beholden to the typical way of doing business. We don't have long-term rights. We don't have the same long-term contracts. We have the opportunity to lean in and create more branded content. What if 90% of a league is just branded content around the athletes because we know fluid fans, which is what we we talk about at Sports Innovation Lab every day, these new age fans want to do things differently. Mm. So if it's a platform where we go, fantastic to find and consume women's sports. If we're, it's all shoulder content and only a tiny percent of actual on-field play, fantastic. That's what the Olympics, that's how they, that's how they, they started. That's how they've, the, the largest single contributor to the Olympic movement are women in the United States. And I'll explain that. NBC is the single largest contributor to the Olympic movement. I spent eight years there, so I really understand. They're the largest contributor and more women watch the Olympics than men in the in the US because they do it differently. They tell the stories, they're not focused on the statistics. So they figured it out. There's an untapped market out there. What can we do in the time of COVID to think differently, to lean into fluid fans, which do things very differently they're open to change, empowered to choose, and constantly evolving. That's the three pillars of a fluid fan. That's what I want this, this conversation to be about, is how do we rethink the model rather than go, please don't cut us. It's the right thing to do. Yes, of course it's the right thing to do. Let's get that out of the way. How do we do things differently? That's Those are the conversations I get fired up about because women have the nimbleness that the men do not. And that is an advent. That is an advantage we should lean into. There's going to be a call on players to be more accessible. There's mm -hmm. going to be a call on um, making sure that content and behind the scenes content is going to have to evolve. I think federations are going to have to open up the aperture on what they're willing to let fans into from a behind the scenes perspective and even from a broadcast and a commercial perspective, making sure that, you know, what used to be so protected from a commercial rights perspective, um, where content is concerned, we've, we've got to change the game and make sure that that content content is more accessible to fans and also more accessible to brands because I think that's where the value comes for it for sponsorship for brands to continue to lean in from an investment perspective there has to be um, increased value in terms of how they're able to connect with their audiences too and I think there's an opportunity for women to actually be innovative and lead that charge I also have the example of a club team and if we talk about Olympic UNA with one of the best women's team uh, in the world uh, what makes the, the, the difference is that, okay, they have the president who is really uh, giving a lot of support of the, of the women's team. And um, some brands from the team decided, okay, we cannot afford to have the men, but we decide to work with the women. And what they found as a brand being uh, collaborating with Olympic UNA and the girls, they say the girls are available. Mm -hmm. And this is what we like. We are close to our players and our players have the right image. They are close to the fans. They, they take the time after the games. And it's really showing that, OK, if we want to support the women's game, we receive back because the girls are close to, to the players and, uh, and all this. But it's also like the decision of the leaders who say, OK, this is what I expect from you. You are a brand. You want to work with us. But you need to step up the game and to really give the the best of your knowledge, of your competence to put the women's for the women's get forward.